I am the laughing stick on YouTube. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Jimmy Chang, a professional photographer and filmmaker based in London. First, I would like to say thank you to all of you who watched my recent videos, especially the one when I talked about equivalence, which I received an overwhelmingly large amount of comments. I wouldn't want to have another online debate again, but I discovered a few interesting ones that I would like to share with you later in this video. That particular video was made with an aim to make more people aware of crop factors and formats. Michael Forthus in particular, who often receives bashing from photographers who use larger sensor cameras. I still stand by every word I said, but after reading so many comments that call me a liar, an idiot, total nonsense, and simply wrong, together with some other horrible names, to the point that made me went back to my computer to double check if I'm wrong all along since I started my photography journeys 20 years ago. But I'm relieved. I thought the world has changed so much that even photography that I knew doesn't exist anymore. But it does. Here I have a few professional articles and websites so you can read up yourself about crop factors and equivalence in the description below. As you can see in my equivalence video, I may be a professional who uses Micro Four Thirds gear, but like I also mentioned in my video, I was a full frame photographer and still have a few full frame gear, both digital and analog, just like my Leicas. Moreover, I never ever trash talk full frame in this channel, but I do promote Micro Four Thirds, not because I've used it, but because I think more people should learn and appreciate this format. When I made that video, I didn't expect so many of you would comment. I thought it would be another video that not many would watch, <laughs> to be quite frank, but it seems like a very sensitive one for some. However, I'm glad to see so many have appreciated and also agree on the points I highlighted in that video. First, there were many debates, and still ongoing, about equivalent focal length, and some even said that I was so wrong to crop a full frame image to make an equivalent to Micro Four Thirds. But to me, there is no full frame, but there is 135 format. And there is no medium format, but there is 120. There is also APS-C, H, 4 third, 1 inch, and so on. And each of these formats covers the entire frame, which means they're all full frame. But Micro Four Third is cropped from 135 format. A lens technical focal length never changes in any format, only the effective angle of view due to the crop. So instead of making an equivalence argument that educating photographers that a 17mm full third lens is equivalent to a 34mm in 135 format, I simply flipped the coin and converting a 135 format into a micro four third equivalent. What I didn't expect was an avalanche of bashings, presumably from photographers who only shoot 135 format or full frame, saying that I was wrong to crop a full frame image to make it micro four thirds. Well, that means that it's okay to make a micro four third lens to have an equivalent angle of view in full frame, but not the other way around. Well, things do go both ways, you know. And like I said, a 35 millimeter lens is a 35 millimeter lens, whether it's medium format, full frame, APS-C or micro four thirds. It does not matter. Only the angle of view changes in different formats. If you want more technical read up, I have a menu from panavision.com in the video description, which describes everything between various different formats in the video world. But it's no difference in photography, because the theory is exactly the same. Then some viewers also said that I should use a 17mm lens to compare the 35mm lens that I used in my example. But this is exactly the point I was trying to make. A 17mm lens is a 17mm lens. And because of the crop factor in Micro Four Thirds, and also because of the inherent wider view to view, a 17mm lens will yield an angle of view that will have an effective focal length when compared to 135 format, a 34mm field of view. But the compression will be different. The depth of view would be different because it's not a 35mm lens. Study my crop 35mm image again. You will see that bokeh, compression, depth of view are basically the same, minus the rendering and bokeh shades because they are different lenses. So in essence, many are still confused with the numbers on the lens. Speaking of numbers, 
I continue to emphasize the f-stop. Or let's use another phrase, the amount of light entering the lens. Regardless of focal length, a 2.8 is a 2.8. In any, and I mean any format. One comment got it spot on. Any photographer who uses a handheld light meter can basically confirm that. You take a measurement and look at that setting. And that setting can be applied to any format for that particular exposure. If some are still saying that Michael Forther sensor is darker than larger format, well, they need to either prove it by showing me two photographs from two different formats shooting with the same lighting conditions with different settings. What many believe smaller sensor is darker or noisier is due to pixel density. Considering Michael Forther's format is about four times smaller than 135. So a 20 megapixel Michael Forther sensor will equate to a 80 megapixel full frame sensor and much more in medium format. If you scale it up, some 40 megapixel smartphone sensor can equate to over 500 megapixel in full frame. With that sort of pixel density, the photo site on the sensor will be much smaller than a larger format. And this effectively collects less light. To compensate that, the processor will have to boost the signals, resulting more heat and ultimately more noise. It's physics and you can't change that. And this is why smaller sensor is always noisier than larger format. But all that I just said had nothing to do with the lens or the aperture. A sensor is there to record various lights and colors and turn them into digital data. The F number printed on the lens barrel is calculated by the size of the lens focal length by the opening diameter. It's an indication on how much light was allowed to pass through the lens to the negative or digital sensor. It's a physical thing and you don't multiply or divide by anything else. The design of the lens will have to ensure the rear elements covers the entire sensor and its mass and physics again. And this is why larger aperture lenses are bigger because of the opening is larger to allow more light in. And you can't change the physics again. And because of the differences in format and combines with the crop factor, you can, for any given maximum aperture, have smaller lenses for smaller formats. And that have the equivalent angle of view or reach or focal length or whatever you want to call it. But just remember, no matter how you look at it, a 50mm lens is always going to be a 50mm lens on 135 format. But when you put it on Michael Forther cameras, it will have an angle of view like 100mm or 85mm on the APS-C or 35mm on a medium format. So when you crop in or crop out, there is no difference on compression or depth of field, only how much more or less being seen by the negative or the sensor. I thought this was stimulating and I hope that this video further explained what I said in that video. But in the end, a photographer can believe what he likes. But to me, who have worked as a photographer for nearly half my life with different formats and technologies, and all I care is to choose what works best for me and my photography. I have camera range from sensor smaller than a penny to negative as big as an A4 paper. And no matter what you believe, just be nice, as it became quite hostile as I read some of the comments in that video. Oh yes, just as a thought, I have a brand new troller stalking me on Instagram. He's been very consistent posting Michael Forther is dead in my last couple of posts. <laughs> but there you go. Anyhow, I will stop here and hope that this video makes more sense and clarify a few more misconceptions. Remember, I have included a few links in the video description so you can do some background reading if you're interested in this particular topic. And remember, I'm here only to help. I may not be a technical designer or optical engineer, but I'm sharing knowledge that I have accumulated over the past 20 years. I enjoy building a photography community which enjoy image making. And this is a rare occasion that I speak out in this increasingly hostile virtual world, as no one seems to be brave enough to say it. You can call me anything you want or to give me a million dislikes or even unsubscribing from this channel. And like I said, all that I said are already well covered in the photography theories and online publications. And if you just spend a little time to dig around, and I'm sure you can find all the right answers. And just don't watch too many YouTube videos, including mine. But if you want to learn more about making images and further your photography career, then you may want to stick around. Ah, yes, just a reminder, this will be the last time I will talk about equivalence. If one wants some more answers, the links are in the description. Peace.